Hello guys and welcome back to the seventh part of the Kotlin UP2 Pro series. In this part I will explain what strings are. So in the last videos you learned a lot about the print line function. So we could for example write print line this is an example text and this would of course just print this is an example text. And what you also learned was um, how to create variables and how to define the types for that variable. So if you write val x is equal to 10, then by typing the 10 as a whole number here, so it doesn't have any decimal places or so, um, by doing that we tell the compiler that we want this x to be an integer. So we don't have to write explicitly um, x colon int, which would also work, but that is redundant, so we can remove that. And the same way this works, um, the print line function basically works too. So by declaring a text in um, quotation marks, we tell the compiler that we want this to be printed as a text and not print the variable that is called this is an example text, um, what wouldn't even work because we cannot have spaces in variable names, but we have to specify for the compiler that this is explicitly a text and we want to print it like that. And in programming, these texts in quotation marks are called strings. So what we can also do here is write well and let's, let's call it string and set that to this is an example text. And then of course don't write this here and instead print the string. So if we run this now, you see it just prints this is an example text because we set the, the text of the variable string to this is an example text and here we remove the quotation marks so we want to print the value of our string object. So the value is this is an example text and this will be inserted here. So this will just print the same. And what also works is if we just go before that string and write for example um, our string is colon and then I move that quotation mark to the end and I'll write a dollar sign again. So this will again um, insert our value of the string at that place. So if we run that you see that it prints our string is and then it inserts the this is an example text string. So a cool thing we can do with um, strings is we can call many functions on strings. To do that we um, surround the string here with curly brackets like we did before and inside of that we write a point after the string. The point basically means that we want to access the methods or the functions um, from that string which basically changed that string, um, most of them. And you can see there are tons of functions that we can apply to that string and I'm going to show you the function to uppercase which as the name says um, will convert the string to uppercase letters. So what this does is it will insert the string, this is an example text here, and call the to uppercase function on that. So this text will be converted to uppercase. So let's run this right now. And as you can see our string is, this is an example text and this is an uppercase. So there are tons of functions you can apply to a string which is pretty awesome. So if we take a look at the signature of the uppercase function, to do that I remove some letters here and press control space to show the hint. Then we see that this function returns a string type. So um, if we write that function that means that this whole object here will be a string too. And that means that we can um, again apply functions on that object. So we could write a dot after that to uppercase method again 
and call, for example, the to lowercase method, which wouldn't make much sense. But to show you, if I run that now, it will print the string in lowercase. So first it will um, convert it all to uppercase and then it will convert the whole string that is in uppercase to lowercase again. And that is the final string that will be printed here. But of course these two string methods don't make any sense. I just wanted to show you that you can concatenate several methods. So your homework for this video is to save your name in a string variable and then print the name in uppercase and reversed. I haven't shown you how to actually reverse a string, but you will find the function for that if you just scroll through the string functions. So the name of that is pretty intuitive and I want you to actually learn how to find a method you don't know the name of yet. If you found a solution, then don't mind posting it in the comments so I can tell you if that is a correct solution and if there's anything you can improve on that solution. Finally, I will go through the solution of the homework of the last video where we should calculate the volume of a sphere given the radius. So for that, you have to create the radius variable, which is in my case 5.5. Then I created a variable which is pi and saved the value of pi here, which is of course not <laughs> the exact value because that doesn't exist, but is a, it is a fairly exact value. And finally, I saved the volume in another variable. So I gave you the formula um, about how to calculate the volume of a sphere in the last video, which is um, 0.75 times pi times radius to the power of 3. So you have to actually write radius times radius times radius here and then simply print um, the radius and the volume here. So if this series is helpful for you, please leave a like and a comment. And also if there's anything I can improve on, please tell me that. That would be really helpful for me. And also if you have any questions about this video, don't mind asking them in the comments. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next video. Have a good day and bye bye.